A uh, person in the neighborhood recently caught a groundhog in a live trap. What do you recommend we do in these cases? What are we supposed to do with the wildlife that we okay. caught? Um, we will not remove an animal from a trap. It is the responsibility of whoever set the trap to remove that animal. Um, basically, if it's something, you know, it's not injured, it's not sick or anything like that, uh, what we tell people to do, just, you know, kind of take a drive out in the country, find a nice grassy area with water. You, you don't want to put it near anyone's home or anything like that where it's going to become a problem with them, okay? And then just go ahead and release it there because that's what we do with our wildlife, you know. Um, if, you know, something like that gets in your house or your home or something uh, and, and it's posing, you know, it's confined in that public area, uh, we'll go pick it up and that's what we do. We just release them out somewhere safe for the animal and for the people. Do you all kind of advise them too to stay away from the horse farms? Because a groundhog next to a horse farm would be a disaster. Yeah, you got you to pick your spot well. Um, you know, you want to try to find somewhere where there's, you know, kind of a wooded area where that animal has protection, where they've got water. And then, like I said, away from you know, houses and, and anim other animals that they could, you know, po potentially just transferring the nuisance on, you know, you don't want to do that. Any other questions about that? Yep. Um, as far as legally, I mean, animal care people can only do what the law requires. Exactly. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, a lot of the times, you know, uh, people will say, well, I need you to come get this dog. He's bothering me you know, in my neighbor's yard. And, you know, we don't just go up to houses and remove animals, okay? Um, if we see a violation, um, RO4-21 does give us the legal authority to remove an animal for any violation that we see. Uh, obviously, if it's a licensing violation, we're not gonna remove the animal. Um, if it is something severe, we will go ahead and do that. And we do have the authority to do that. Um, we're not police officers, okay? We can't arrest people, we can't detain people. Um, I don't carry a gun, taser, anything like that. Um, so uh, the ordinances you can actually find online. I meant to bring a copy with me and failed to do so. I got distracted by that BOA this morning. Um, but they're all online. Um, it's chapter four, is called Animals and Fowl, and that's where you can find basically all the laws that we enforce. And those would be the leash laws, the city license and rabies. Um, there's vicious laws, um, just and basically your basic cruelty laws. Um, I think it was July of '09. They actually passed new ordinances. Um, they're not any longer referred to as cruelty. It's called the care and treatment of animals, um, and they're very specific. Uh, dogs are required to have shelter, shade, water. Um, it defines tethering. Uh, and, all, and all of that stuff in great detail. Um, so basically now, you know, you can't just stick some random kind of doghouse up there. It has to actually be some type of structure with a floor, a roof, and sides, and stuff like that. Uh, so they did get pretty specific, and that's helped us out a whole lot in terms of what we can do as well. Um, tethering is a big issue around here. Uh, animals are required to be on a 12-foot tether. Uh, it, it, it's 12, 12 feet is the minimum that they can be re restrained with. Uh, the tether has to be under five pounds and it has to swivel at both ends. Okay, so you can't wrap that tether directly around that dog's neck. Um, and also, um, they do have to have a properly fitting collar. You're not allowed to tether an animal with a choke chain. Because, you know, there have been incidences where, you know, a dog will jump a fence or something and he's got that choke chain on, that's a hazard. Um, so you don't, you don't ever want to do anything like that. It's perfectly fine, you know, to walk them on the leash. You know, you guys are out for an evening stroll or something. It's perfectly fine to have them on a choke collar like that, but if you're going to permanently tether them, they do need a proper collar. You guys have any questions about any of those care and treatment ordinances? And like I said, they are available online. If you're walking down the sidewalk mm -hmm. and there's a fence and then there's a gap and then there's a bush, and there's a dog in the backyard of the owner. Mm -hmm. The dog comes up and ambushes the pedestrian with the loud barking, startles them. Yeah. Is that a violation? That that is a violation. Um, leash laws are basically if an animal is on your property 
and you are outside with it, it does not have to be restrained, okay? The second it leaves your property, it's in violation. No animal can be unrestrained off the owner's property, okay? So um, if you're outside with your dog, you know, and he's you know, out in the front yard and you're sitting on the front porch, that's perfectly fine. If you go inside, that's a violation. You do have to be actually outside with your animal while it's on your property, okay? So if it does leave your property, that, that would be considered running at large. Mm -hmm. dogs that keep barking and barking and they've been turned in and there's no way to... Yeah, we do get a lot of barking complaints. And uh, my other sergeant, actually, she's the only officer that handles the barking complaints. Her name's Sergeant Gibson. Um, and basically, they have a, a three-step process. You're, never, you're always going to get transferred to her voicemail um, because she does require that you leave name, number, and address in order for her to file a complaint. You can't file a barking complaint anonymously. Um, so basically what she does, the first step, um, they'll contact you back and you will receive a letter in the mail as well as the person with the barking dog. And that suggests several ways um, that you guys could, you know, amongst yourselves or as an individual try to take care of that issue. If that doesn't work and we get a second complaint on that address, Sergeant Gibson goes out there um, she speaks with the owner of the animal, and she obtains their name, date of birth, okay? And if it comes down to a third complaint, uh, she re re retrieves that information and gives it to the complainant. Um, and basically, all you need to file a complaint downtown is name, date of birth, and address. So she will supply you with all three of those things so that you can go downtown and make your complaint uh, for that barking issue. And usually that stuff, um, it's not really a court issue. It usually goes to mediation, and they'll sit you down and try to, try to work it out amongst yourselves. We used to cite for that on behalf of the complainant, but what ended up happening was we would file the charge for them, and they wouldn't show up for court. So um, we have changed our policy, and now it's up to that complainant to go downtown and make, a, make their own charge. Mm-hmm. Do you have tips for owners to help reduce the amount of barking a dog does? Um, relieve distractions, basically. Um, if you're going to put your dog out, uh, make sure you know he's occupied uh, with things that you know, so he's not barking at the neighbors, or um, you know, just basically um, the time of day as well. Um, if you know that your neighbors are sleeping at a particular time or or something like that, um, if it is an inside-outside dog, you maybe want to let him outside when you know that they're going to be up or not home or something like that. Um, it just kind of depends on case to case kind of stuff. You guys have any more questions about that? I do have some cards for you guys. If I, I can't get to my pocket right now, I'll hand them out when, when I'm done. It um, has our number on it and you can call that number and you go to our dispatcher and you know if you have any kind of uh, question he can direct your call to anywhere in the facility even down to the humane society um, and we do get a lot of confusion with that you know they say you know i'm no longer able to take care of my animal i want to you know turn him into the humane society well the humane society doesn't accept animal outside animals you know you do have to surrender their med animal control um, they're evaluated and and placed down there uh, through our facility you guys have any? Yeah. Um, you said the police department um, enforces the food complaint. Mm -hmm. They do it. And that will get us for anything on the street. From what I understand from what was said, it's recommended at least that people pick up food in their own backyard yeah, as well. Definitely. Is um, there a violation of that? Thing? If it becomes such an issue where it becomes unsanitary, um, we, we can actually enforce it. Um, if it's to the point where, you know, the animal can't sit, lay down, or anything without stepping in it, or, you know, it's causing some kind of nuisance in terms of smell, you know, if we see that violation, we can enforce it if it's become that problem. If it's just somebody randomly walking by your yard and they happen to use the bathroom then and go on their way, there's not anything we can do about that. But if it, if it does become an issue where the animal's living in unsanitary conditions, that is part of the uh, care and treatment ordinance. So there really, really would be an enforcement issue of, in general with it being in the backyard. It's just a matter of, for, I guess, the benefit of the whole community and I'll be picked up. If Definitely, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's not a law that says, you know, if there's a pile of, of poo there that you have to go pick it up. 
but if, if it is to the point where uh, it's creating a nuisance, as in the smell, it is part of the nuisance ordinance that that would fall under, as well as uh, the unsanitary conditions for the care and treatment. Okay. You guys have any, any more questions for me? No? Okay, I'll pass around uh, our cards that have our phone number on it for you guys as well, if you guys uh, needed to call in a violation or something like that. 